All right, so in this final video for lecture two in our series, we're going to finally start thinking about doing some algebra with functions. Now, be cautious here. The functions themselves are not going to be algebraic. Not yet. So that'll be coming very, very soon. But even, even if we have a function that is graphical, even if we have a function that's numerical, we can do algebra with those functions. For example, it makes sense to add together functions f plus g. Because if our functions are numerical functions, that is, they input a number, they output a number, we can add those numbers together, and thus we can create a way of adding the function. So when we add functions f plus g, we define that to be the, the sum of their images, the sum of the output of the function. We add together f of x with g of x, right? Because remember, f of x is just the y-coordinate associated to the function f when you plug in x. And g of x is, it's not the function, it's the y-coordinate connected to x when you stick x inside of the g machine. So we're going to define f of f plus g evaluated x as f of x plus g of x. And we're going to do that for all four arithmetic operations. f minus g of x is defined to be f of x minus g of x. Uh, f times g evaluated x is, is evaluated as f of x times g of x. And then f divided by g of x is defined to be f of x divided by g of x. So we can do arithmetic on functions by doing arithmetic on the output numbers of those functions. Now there are some domain issues we have to be careful about. In order to define f plus g, f of x has to be defined and g of x has to be defined. So the only way we can find f plus g of x is that f of x has to be a number and g of x has to be a number. So x has to be inside the domain of f and it has to be inside the domain of g. And so if we have those considerations, the domain of f plus g will be the intersection. That's what this symbol right here means, intersection. It's like an upside down union symbol. The intersection of the domain of f with the domain of g will be the domain of f plus g. That is, if f of x is defined and g of x is defined, then we can define f plus g of x. Uh, we do the same thing for subtraction. The domain of f minus g will be the intersection of the domains of f and g. The domain of of f times g will be the intersection of the domains of f and g, right? Those kind of make sense. That's what we do for division as well. For f of x divided by g of x to be well-defined, f of x has to be defined, g of x has to be defined. But there is one other little hiccup we have to be aware of when we talk about division here. We have to make sure that the denominator, g of x, we have to make sure that thing is not zero. And so we have to also stipulate that g of x is not zero for that choice of x. Otherwise, the thing would be undefined. Dividing by zero is not going to produce a number here. And so let's look at an example of this if we focus on just some two functions that are expressed numerically. So we have one function, f, whose domain is going to be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the associated y-coordinates are these numbers, which we can read from the table. Uh, we also have a function, g illustrated right here. Its domain will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the associated y-coordinates will be these uh, six numbers you can see right there. So if we want to define f plus g, the first thing to think about is actually the domain, right? What's the domain of this thing? The domain of f plus g, like we saw on the previous slide, this is going to be all the numbers for which f and g are simultaneously defined. So notice that f is defined, it's defined one through six, but G is defined zero through five. So you'll notice zero is defined for G, but it's not defined for F. Uh, one, two, three, four are good, but six is defined for F, but not defined for G. So the domain of our function is gonna be one, two, three, four, and five. We can't define F plus G at one. Oh, sorry, we can do that one. We can't do F plus G at zero because F of zero is undefined. We can't do f plus g at 6 because g of 6 is undefined. So we do get 1 through 5 as the domain of this function. And so then how do we identify the number that goes in here? We're just going to, so for f plus g of 1, we're going to take negative 4 plus 4, and that's equal to 0. That's what we get right there. So to do f plus g of 2, we're going to take 0 plus negative 2, which is negative 2. So that gives us f plus g of 2. If we want to do 3, we're going to take f of 3, which is negative 2, plus a g of 3, which is 0, and that's going to add to be negative 2. That's the sum in that situation. Um, f of 4 is 1, g of 4 is negative 7, the sum will be negative 6, and that's what we define f plus g at 4. And then finally, 
f of five is three, g of five is 11, the sum would be 14. So f plus g of five is equal to 14. That's all there is to it. You have to just add the y coordinates together if both of them are simultaneously defined. Now this, the difference of f and g would be computed similarly. The product of f and g would be done similarly. I wanna mention next now the, uh, the quotient of f and g. So the quote, to find the domain of f divided by g, right? That one's a little bit different because we have to look for points that are simultaneously defined. We already did that, but we also cannot let the denominator equal zero. And you'll notice that when, when x equals three, g of three is zero. So three, we have to remove from the domain. And so the domain will only be points one, two, four, and five. Uh, notice three is removed from consideration here. Now it's okay, it's okay that f of two is equal to zero because in that situation, f of two would be zero divided by negative two, g of two is negative two. So f divided by g at two would be zero divided by two. And zero divided by two is, it's defined. This is just zero, right? If the numerator is zero, as long as the denominator is not zero, that will just be zero itself. So f divided by g at two is defined. And then the other numbers will be handled similarly, right? If you take for one, you'll take negative four divided by four, uh, that'll give you a negative one. If you take one, divided by negative seven, that gives you negative one seventh. So you often get fractions when you divide. Uh, when you do five, f of five is three, g of five is 11. So f divided by g at five would be three elevenths. And that's how we compute it. And so there's not much more to it. Just make sure that we never divide by zero and we only do the operations when both functions are defined on their own. And then we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. This can be done graphically as well. You just look up the points on the graph. And in the next lecture, because this is the end of lecture two, we'll explore how to start doing these uh, function evaluations and other examinations of functions for the algebraic functions, which we'll spend most of our time with in this course.